Oh, praise to the Most High. Let's face towards Jerusalem, son of the prayers. And now, O oh Lord God of Israel, that has brought thy people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and high arm and with signs and with wonders and with great power and has gotten thyself a name as appeared at this day. O oh Lord, our God, we have sinned. We have done ungodly. We have dealt unrighteously in all thine ordinances. Let thy red turn from us, for we are but a few left among the heathen, where thou hast scattered us. Hear our prayers, O Lord, and our petitions, and deliver us for thy own sake, and give us favor in the sight of them which, le which have led us away, that all the earth may know that thou art the Lord our God, because Israel and his posterity is called by thy name. O Lord, look down from thy holy house and consider us, Bow down thine ear, O Lord, to hear us. Open thine eyes and behold. For the dead that are in the graves, whose souls are taken from their bodies, will give unto the Lord neither praise nor righteousness. But the soul that is greatly vexed, which goeth stooping and feeble, and the eyes that fail, and the hungry soul, will give thee praise and righteousness, O Lord. Therefore, we do not make our, hum we, we do not make our humble supplication before thee, O Lord, our God, for the righteousness of our father, of our fathers, and of our kings, for thou hast sent out, for thou hast sent out thy wrath and indignation upon us, as thou hast spoken by thy servants, the prophets, saying, "Thus saith the Lord: Bow down your shoulders to serve the king of Babylon. So shall he remain in the land that I have given unto your fathers." Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Father, for gathering us in the name of your Son, the Christ. Heavenly Father, the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for all the mercy that you've shown upon your people, Israel, for waking us up, Father, in the last days, so that we may bethink ourselves and remember the evils that we've done before thee. We are ashamed, Father, because of the things that we've done, as we read in the law, that the, the, all the ordinances that we've broken before your face. Heavenly Father, we pray that you forgive your sons and daughters this day. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Hear our prayers. Hear our supplication and forgive our sins, Father, from thy house. Heavenly Father, we pray that you give us favor, Father, in thy sight, that your sons and daughters may come in and learn of thee and repent of their wicked deeds. Heavenly Father, we pray that you protect us, Father, from our enemies because we are surrounded by our enemies, Father, in the lands of our captivity. We pray, Father, that you help us, Father, that our enemies do not have, have an advantage over us because our enemies are always planning and plotting evil against us to destroy us, Father, to overthrow us. We pray, Father, that their enterprises come to naught. We pray, Father, that you let them fall, Father, into the, 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 the snares that they've laid previously for us, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, may the congregation say, Hallelujah! 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 Oh, praise to the Most High. Let's give the Most High a hand for that. Oh, praise to the Lord. Oh, praise, oh, praise, oh, praise. Oh, praises to the Most High. Oh, praises. Uh, so now tonight's topic is called paying our debts. Paying our debts. Let's open up with the book of Baruch. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. The book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. With our scatterers for a reproach and a curse. And to be subject to payment according to all the iniquities of our fathers. Which departed from the Lord our God. Okay, read verse 8 again. Read it for me again. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. So now, this we, we read this scripture all the time, that we are yet this day in our captivity, which we are, in the lands of our slavery, where thou hast scattered us, the most high scattered us among these nations, okay, for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments, according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. We read this scripture all the time in class, during camp, we read the class, this scripture all the time. But I want to show you something about this verse right here. Give me the book of Job 11 verse 6. Job chapter 11 verse 6. The book of Job, chapter 11, verse 6. Come on. 
and that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. So the Lord that, will show us, hold on, the Lord will show us the secrets of wisdom. He will show us the secrets of wisdom in these last days. Go ahead. That they are double to that which is. That they are double. The secrets of wisdom, they are double. Meaning what? The scriptures have double meanings. You understand? Some have more than one, some have more than two, some have more than three and so forth. So the Lord is teaching us that he's going to show us the secrets of wisdom that they are double to that which is written. So go back to where he was at now. Baruch 3 verse 8. Let's read that again. The book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Behold, Mom? we are yet this day in our captivity. Mm -hmm. They that were scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payment according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord our God. So we are yet this day in our captivity. We are in slavery right now because of our sins. Where thou hast scattered us, the most high God is scattered us among all nations on earth. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32 verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 26. We are in slavery right now. You understand where the most high God has scattered us. South Africa is one of those lands. Congo is one of those lands. Gabon, okay, Rwanda, Mozambique, Chad, Nigeria, Niger, Cape Verde, the Americas, England, Russia. You understand the Portuguese islands and so forth. Read that. Uh, Deuteronomy 32 verse 26, come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 26. Mm -hmm. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I will do what? I would scatter them into corners. So the most that God is saying to us, he says, he will scatter us into corners. That's what the word, that's the word Baruch is using. It says, where thou hast scattered us. The Lord is saying he will scatter us into corners. Come on, meaning the four corners of the earth. Read. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. You see what the Lord is saying? He says he will make our remembrance to cease from among men. Because today, how is our remembrance cease from among men? Give me that in Psalms 83. He says, I will make the remembrance of them. Meaning what? Nobody going to remember you. When they think of the so-called, when they think of Jews, when they, they think about anything that's in this Bible, the nations are not going to think about us. They're going to think about somebody else. Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 83 verse 3. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 3. Come on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Against God's people. So the enemies of God will take crafty counsel against God's people, the Israelites, that the Lord will scatter into the four corners of the earth to become slaves. Read. And consulted against thy hidden ones. The nations have consulted against the hidden ones because we are the ones that are hidden. Our identity is not known in the earth. Read. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Read. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. You see that thing? The nations have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. The nations have cut us off from being a nation. Because now we don't know our nationality. We don't know where we come from. We don't know who we are. You understand? We don't know how did we end up in the conditions that we're in as a nation. So they've cut us off from being a nation because they took away our nationality from us. You understand? And they gave us the slave names. So that's how they cut us off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's why the Lord says, I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. You understand? Give me that in 2 Maccabees chapter 6. Okay? 2 Maccabees. 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 6. Watch this. It says, what? The nations have said, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. You understand? Read that. This is how they cut us off from being a nation. Watch this. Read that. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 6. Read. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or mm -hmm. ancient feasts. Come on. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. 
So it was against the law for us to profess ourselves to be Jews. So it was the law of the Greeks that we could not say we are the children of Israel. So that's why we had to change our names and call ourselves by the name of the Greeks. Watch this. Give me 2 Maccabees chapter 4 now. Chapter 4 verse 9. Because it was against the law. It was illegal to call yourself a Jew under the Greeks. You understand? That's how we lost our nationality. That's how we, we, not, we don't remember who we are. We call ourselves all the names that our oppressors have given us. We what you got. Second Maccabees 4 verse 9. Come on. Second book of Maccabees chapter 4 verse 9. Really? Besides this, he promised to assign 150 more. Come on. If he might have license to set him up, to set him up a place for exercise. So that's going into Jason. Jason was an Israelite. He was a coon. You understand? He was cooning for the Greeks at the expense of his own people. Right? And for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. So the training up meaning what? He was enrolling our, our, bra our, our young men into the Olympics. You understand? Right? To write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochians. You see what he was doing? Our people now were starting to call themselves Antiochians. They were starting to call themselves Greeks. Like today, we're calling ourselves South Africans, which we are not. You understand? Calling ourselves Tongas and Bantus, which we are not. We are the Israelites. You understand? So that's what our nationality started to disappear when we were slaves under the Greeks. You understand? That's, what, that's when our nationality was taken. And from that point on, all the way up to now, our nationality was taken away from us so that we don't remember who we are. Okay? So now, let's go back. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32, verse 26 again. Okay? The book we, were in the book of, we, were, we were in Psalms 83. Read Psalms 83, verse 4. Then we're going to branch back to Deuteronomy 32, verse 26. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 4. Read. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. From being a what? From being a nation. M meaning what? Our nationality will be taken away from us. That's what David is prophesying here. Come on. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So our nationality and our names will be taken from us. That's what, if they, actually, this is Asaph. This is the Psalm of Asaph. That our names and our nationality will be taken from us. Started with the Greeks, 333 BC, on up. You understand? Now, go back to Deuteronomy 32, verse 26. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 26. Read. I said, him into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Read that again, verse 26. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 26. I Read. say, I would scatter them into corners. Mm -hmm. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. You see what the Lord says he would do for us? He would do to us because we broke his commandments. That's where we are now. Because of what? We are living under the curses, the judgment for breaking the laws of God. So go back to Baruch 3, verse 8 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Really? Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Mm -hmm. Where thou hast scattered us. Where, where thou hast scattered us. So the Lord scattered us among the four corners of the earth. And when we got there, our nationality and our names would be no more in remembrance. That's what he's saying. Come on. Where thou hast scattered us for mm -hmm. a reproach and a curse. Stop right there. For a reproach and a curse. Let's deal with the reproach. Give me that in Psalms 44 verse 13. Psalms 44 verse 13. For a reproach and a curse. When we are in the lands of these enemies, we will be a reproach. Okay. Psalms 44, verse 13. Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 44, verses, verses 18. No, verse 13, 1, 3. Psalms 44, verse 13. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 44, verses 13. Read. Thou makest us a reproach to our neighbors. Come on. 
a scorn and a derision to them that are around about us. You see what he's saying? That will make us as a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to them that are around about us. Who's around about us? The heathens are around about us. The other nations, they are the ones that are around about us. They have us in captivity. They have us captive. You understand? Next verse. He's going he's gonna to explain to us what is the reproach in verse 14. Come on. Thou makest us a byword among the heathen. Stop right there. You see that? You see what the reproach is? The byword. You're making us a reproach among the neighbors, a scorn and a derision among uh, to them that are around about us. Thou makest us a byword among the heathen. So the reproach is the byword being called your name being taken from you, being called, being called outside of your God-given name. Derogatory terms, you understand? Niggas, uh, duckies, baboons, spicks, so on and so forth. We would be called outside of our God-given names. That's what he's saying right there. That's a reproach. You understand? In a negative connotation. Read that again, verse 14. The book of Psalms, chapter 44, verses 14. Read. Thou makest us a byword among the heathen. Mm -hmm. And shaking of the head among the people. You see that thing? A shaking of the head among the people. So our the, the nations will look at us with what? With disgrace. With, with the look of disapproval. You understand? Because of our sin. That's what Baruch is explaining here. Go back to Baruch 3 verse 8 again. The book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Behold, we are yet the stay in our captivity. Read. Scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Stop right there. For a reproach and a curse. The reproach is the byword. A shaking of the head among the, the people, which is the heathens. Right? It says, and a curse. Give me Baruch 1 verse 19. Baruch chapter 1 verse 19. Read that. The book of Baruch chapter 1 verse 19. Come on. Since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt. And to mm -hmm. this present day. And to this present day, 2021, and to this present day. From the time we left Egypt and to this present day. Read. We have been disobedient unto the Lord our God. We have been what? We have been disobedient unto the Lord our God. We have been disobedient unto the Lord our God. Meaning what? Going against his law, statutes, and commandments. Come on. And we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. That's how we disobeyed him, not hearing his voice. We've been negligent. Watch this. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 38. Okay. Give me Sirach 38. Give me Sirach 38 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 38 verse 9. So Baruch is saying, we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. What was the negligence? Watch this. Sirach 38 verse 9. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38, verse 9. Read. My son, in thy sickness, be not negligent. In your sickness, don't be negligent. Because the laws of God is what brought healing to us. So when we rejected God's commandments, we became sick, spiritually, mentally, and physically, like it is this day. You understand? So we want, is says that now the commandment comes back and says, my son, in thy sickness, be not negligent because we became negligent when we departed from the laws of God. Read. Right? But pray unto the Lord mm -hmm. and he will make thee whole. But pray to the Lord, it will make thee whole. He will heal you. Next verse. Come on. Leave off from sin. You see the negligent, the sickness, leave off from sin. So what's causing the sickness in the minds and in the minds of our people is because of what? Sin. The sickness is brought up by because of sin. We are breaking God's commandments. And because of that, guess what? The most High God is plaguing us with diseases. He is plaguing us with confusion. He is plaguing us with madness. Why? Because we have departed from his laws by being negligent. Read verse 10 again. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 38, verse 10. Read. Live up from sin mm -hmm. and order thy hands aright. Read. And cleanse thy heart from all wickedness. You see what the Lord is saying? And cleanse thy heart from all wickedness. Give me that in Psalms 119 verse 9. 
and cleanse thy heart cleanse thy heart from all wickedness. Psalms chapter 119 verse 9. Let's read that. The book of this Psalms. Is how, this is, hold on. This is how we, I need you to stay with me. This is how we cleanse our heart from all wickedness. Psalms 119 verse 9. Read what you got. The book of Psalms chapter 119 verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way mm -hmm. by taking heed thereunto according to thy word. You see, this is how he says, what? What shall a young man, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Cleanse his what? His wicked way. Like it says in Baru in Sirach 38 verse, 9, verse 10. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So this is how we take heed. We cleanse, our way, we, we cleanse ourselves from all wickedness by doing what? By taking heed to the laws of God, by applying what is written in this book. That's what he's saying right there. Okay, go back to Baruch 1 now. Baruch chapter 1, verse 19 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 1, verse 19. Read. Since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. and to this present day, come on, we have been disobedient unto the Lord our God, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. That's why now, watch, watch the next verse. You understand? Watch the next verse. Come on, verse 20. Wherefore, the evils cleave down to us. You see that thing? Because we've been negligent in hearing, not hearing the voice of the Lord our God, he says, wherefore, the evils cleaved unto us. What is the evils? The curse. Remember what Baruch said, because I know some of you forgot. Go back to Baruch 3 verse 8. Read that again for me. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Read. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, mm -hmm. where there were scattered us for a reproach and a curse. You see that thing for a reproach and a curse. So the curse with the curses is the evils that cleaved unto us, the judgments, colonization, slavery, forced migration, diseases. You understand? So on and so forth. Go back to Baruch 1, verse 20 now again. The book of Baruch, chapter 1, verse 20. Read. The way four, the evils cleaved unto us. Mm -hmm. And the curse. And the what? And the curse. The evils cleaved unto us and the curse. Go ahead. Which the Lord appointed by Moses, his servant, at that time. The book of Baruch, chapter 1, verse 20. Wherefore, the evils cleaved unto us and the curse, which the Lord appointed by Moses, his servant, at the time that he brought our fathers out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. to give unto us a land that floweth with milk and honey, like as it is to see this day. Because we saw it, we entered into the promised land. Do you understand? So the, because of what? Because of the promise that the Lord made to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So go back to Baruch now, chapter 3, verse 8 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Read. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, mm -hmm. and to be subject to payments. Read, according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. So now I want to show you something right here. This is the part we wanted to get to. It says to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. So because a lot of the times we use this verse when it says subject to payments in terms of what tax, the tax we have to pay in the lens of our slavery. We are always in debt and so forth. But guess what? This is not just talking about that. Yeah, we use it for that. But when you read the whole chapter, you start to understand what he's actually talking about. Because it's letting it, Baruch is telling you what is the payments that we have to make according to all the iniquities of our fathers. You understand? That's the payment that we are subject to according to the iniquities of our fathers. So the debt that we have to pay is not money. 
No, no, no. The debt that we must pay is not money. Yeah, that's, that's another level of understanding. But what is going into here is, is going into the commandments that we have to keep in the lands of our captivity until the Lord returns. That's the payment we have to make. Because right now, we are in debt. We must pay the Mosai back. We need to understand that. Read that again, verse 8. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Come on. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou was scattered us for a reproach Wait. and a curse, mm -hmm. and to Come be on. subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. So now he's saying to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers. Like, give me that in, um, give, me, give me Psalms 32 verse 5. Psalms 32 verse 5. Watch this. According to all the iniquities of our fathers. Psalms 32 verse 5. Watch this thing. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 32 verses 5. Read. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. I do what? And my iniquity. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. So the subject matter is of, of acknowledging of sin. I acknowledge my sin, my sin, my sin unto thee. Come on. And my iniquity have I not hid. So the sin is the iniquity. The sin is the iniquity that Baruch is making reference to here. Go back to Baruch 3 verse 8. I want this verse to sink in. Okay. Baruch 3 verse 8 again. The book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Right. And to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers. According to all the sins. According to all the sins, plural, of our fathers which departed from the Lord our God. So the fact that the Baruch is teaching us that we are subject to pay the debts that we owe because of the sins that our forefathers did and the children of those fathers, which is us today. So we owe the Lord. We owe the Most High God. So now Baruch is going to tell you exactly what he's talking about. Jump up to verse 1. We're going to read down. Baruch 3 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. O Lord Almighty, mm -hmm. God of Israel, the soul in anguish, the troubled spirit crieth unto thee. You see what the subject matter is about? The soul and the spirit. The soul in anguish and the spirit that is troubled. You see this thing? That's the subject. That's the subject to payments. Because of what? We must pay with our souls. How? We keep the commandments of the Most High God. That's how we're going to pay the debts that we owe. In the lands of our captivity, we are subject to make these payments. We must make these payments if we want to make the trip. That's what Baruch is telling us right here. Read again, verse 1. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. O Lord Almighty, God of Israel, Mm -hmm. The soul in anguish, the troubled spirit crieth unto thee. So our soul is in anguish and our spirit is troubled because we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are in captivity unto this day. Now watch this. It says the soul in anguish. Give me that in Exodus 6 verse 9. Let's go back to the time when we were in Egypt. You understand what the Lord did for us when he delivered us out of the hand of Pharaoh with a mighty hand. Watch this. When he sent Moses to speak to our forefathers and foremothers. Exodus 6 verse 9. Come on. The book of Exodus chapter 6 verse 9. Read. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel. But they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. The reason why they didn't listen to Moses was because of what? Anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage anguish of spirit, meaning we was worn out in captivity by the Egyptians. You understand? And for cruel bondage, hard bondage that we was what? We was facing and experiencing when we was in Egypt. So it is today in spiritual Egypt. You understand? We have anguish of spirit and we are in cruel bondage, 
Hard bondage, the way we, where we, where in we are made to serve this day. You understand? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 65. Deuteronomy 28, verse 65. The Lord, the Lord shall send thee among these nations shall thou find no ease. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee day a trembling heart and fading of eyes and sorrow of mind. Read it again, verse 65. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 65. Read. Among these nations shall thou find no ease. So the Lord is saying, among these nations, we're not going to find no ease. You understand? We are, going to have, we are going to have anguish of spirit and cruel, because of cruel bondage. That's why it says, among these nations, thou shalt find no ease. Meaning things are not going to be easy for us in these last days, in the lands of our slavery. Things are not going to be easy for us. Read. Come on. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Mm -hmm. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Stress. We are going to be in heavy distress. We are going to be distressed by these nations. You understand? Come on. Verse 66 now. Verse 66. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And thou shalt fear day and night. And shall have none assurance of thy life. We're not going to be sure of anything. The only sure thing that we must have today, that we have today, is the laws of the Most High God. You understand? That's the only sure thing we have this day. Second Peter's one verse nineteen. Let's read that. Second Peter chapter one verse nineteen. Come on. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. A what? A more sure word of prophecy. You see, you see what, what the thing that is that that is of surety in these lands of our captivity is the word of the Most High. God's laws is a sure word of prophecy. That's why it says, "Among these nations, thou shall have no ease. You're not going to have none assurance of thy life because they are not for us. They are not set up to help us in these in these last days. They are not set up to be our friends. They are not set up to help us. They are set up to destroy us, to make life difficult for us. But what we do have." In, in the lens of our captivity is the Bible. We have the word of the Most High God, which is the sure word of prophecy. Read that again, verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Come on. It's also a more sure word of prophecy. Read. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. You must take heed to what is written in this book. Take heed to what is written. Read. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Mm -hmm. until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Meaning Christ returns. The spirit of Christ spring up in our spirits and we keep the commandments in the faith of, of the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ until he returns. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Go back to Baruch now. Chapter 3 verse 2 now. Baruch 3 verse 2. Baruch chapter 3 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for thou art merciful, and have pity upon us, because we have sinned before thee. You see that thing? You see that key right there? Because we have sinned before thee. So the reason why we are subject to payments is because of sin. So in order for us to no longer be subject to these payments, we need to pay our debts, which is what? The commandments. We must keep God's laws in the lens of our captivity before the Lord returns. You understand? Read again, verse 2. Baruch chapter 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for thou art merciful, and have pity upon us, because we have sinned before thee. Read. For thou endurest forever, and we perish utterly. Because we die, we get put to death in these lands, from diseases, from plagues, you understand? The police shooting us, you understand? Filling up the jails, abortions, you understand? Kidnappings and so forth. Drug addiction. That's how we perish utterly in these lands. Read. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and of their children 
which have sinned before thee, and not hearkened unto the voice of thee, their God. For the which, for the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. Okay, so now I need you to put some power in your reading. Read verse 4 again. Baruch chapter 3, verse 4. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and of their children which have sinned before thee and not hearken unto the voice of thee, their God. For the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. So now you need to really look at this verse. Look at this verse right here. It says, hear now thee, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. You see what the Lord is saying to us? He says, we are dead. We are spiritually dead. Jump down to verse 11. Watch this. You know what? Read 10 and 11 together. This is how we are dead as a people. We read verse 10 and 11. Come on. The book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 10. Read. So happeneth it, Israel, that thou art in thine enemy's land, mm -hmm. that thou art waxen old in a strange country. Read. That thou art defiled with the dead. You see what is the Lord is saying to us? He says, what happened, you Israelites, that thou art in thine enemy's land? Where are we now? We are in the lands of our enemies right now. We are in the lands of our enemies. Come on. He says, that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxen old in a strange country. We have waxen old in a strange country. You understand? Read. That thou art defiled with the dead. We are defiled with the nations that are dead because the nations are dead. The most High God didn't give us, the, didn't give them the commandments. He never dealt with them, isn't from the beginning. So because of that, they are dead because he never gave us the law. He never gave them the commandments. You understand? So now the Lord is saying, he, he says, we see what Baruch is saying. He says, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. What makes us dead? Because we've mingled with these nations, we've learned their customs. That's what makes us dead. Give me that in Psalms 106. Okay. Psalms 106, verse 34. Start at verse, yeah, start at verse 34. Read verse 34. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verses 34. Read, they did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, mm -hmm. but were mingled among the heathen, learned their works. And learned their works. I need you to pronounce the right words here. And were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. You see that thing? That's what makes us dead. That's why Baruch is saying, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. Because what happened? We were mingled among the heathen. We learned their works, their customs. You understand? Their, their traditions. That took us away from the laws of the Most High God. Keep going. Verse 36. And they served their idols, mm -hmm. which were a snare unto them. Which were a trap unto us. We served their idols. We served their gods. That's why our people today, they celebrate Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. They buy and sell, cook, and work on the Sabbath day, which is all of which is against God's commandments. I'm just mentioning those things. We are eating defiled food in this land. You understand? That's what our people are doing that are not in this truth. That's what's going on. So now go back to Baruch 3, verse 10 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verses 10. Read. How happeneth it, Israel, that thou art in thine enemy's land, mm -hmm. that thou art waxen old in a strange country. Read. That thou art defiled with the dead. We are defiled with the dead because we serve their idols and we want, they were a snare unto us. We serve the idols of these nations. And the, the customs that comes with worshipping their idols. You understand? Read verse 11. That thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. You see what the Lord is saying? He says we are counted with them that go down into the grave. We are as good as dead. We are acknowledged, you understand, with them that go down into the grave. Because the Lord is saying we are as good as dead. 
You understand? We are the walking dead. That's what he's saying right there. Give me, Jay, give me Isaiah 59 verse 10. The Lord is acknowledging as he says, you are as good as dead to me because you are not keeping my commandments. So now I'm acknowledging you like the nations that are around about you that are spiritually dead. The Lord says we are just like them because we departed from his laws. Give me that in Isaiah 59 verse 10. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 59 verse 10. Read. Grope for the wall like the blind. Come on. And we grope as if we had no eyes. Read. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, we grope for the wall like the blind. You know when the blind man is looking for a wall to lean against? The Lord is saying, we are doing that. But we are leaning against the things that are detrimental to us. We are leaning against Christianity. We are leaning against politics. We are leaning against democracy. You are leaning against everything else but the laws of the Most High God. That's what he's saying. That's why it's now we grope for the wall like the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes because we don't know, we don't see the things that we are looking at. We don't know what they are. We don't know how, how, how dangerous they are to us. You understand? We stumble at noonday as in the night. Broad daylight, the Lord says, our eyes is white, is, is they are white shut. You understand? We're spiritually blind. We are in desolate places as dead men. We are in captivity and we are acknowledged with them that go down into the grave. That's what the Lord is saying. We're spiritually dead. You understand? Because we mingled with these nations, we learned their works. So go back to Baruch 3, verse 10, verse 11 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verses 11. Come on. That thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. We are counted with them that go down into the grave. Come on. Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. That's the reason why verse 10 and 11 happened to us. That's why we now we are in where we are waxing old in a strange country. You understand? We are defiled with the dead. The nations are dead. They are defiling us with their customs and ways. You understand? With their graven images. So the loud now is because we've done that. It says thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. That's the reason why verse 10 and 11 says what it says. Now give me that in Sirach chapter 1 verse 5. Let's see what is the fountain of wisdom that we have forsaken. Now we are spiritually dead as a race. Read that. Yes, sir. Baruch, I mean Sirach 1 verse 5. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 1 verse 5. Read. The word of God, most high, is the fountain of wisdom. You see that? The word of God, most high, is the fountain of wisdom. So God's laws, God's commandments in his statutes, that's the fountain of wisdom right there. Come on. And her ways are everlasting commandments. Her ways, the ways of the Lord, they are everlasting commandments. What is this saying? He says God's commandments is forever. You understand? They are not going to stop. We're going to keep God's commandments even in the kingdom. We will keep God's laws. Okay, go back to Baruch now. Baruch chapter 3 verse 4. The book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 4. Read. O Lord, O Lord, O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. Because we're spiritually dead. Because we've mingled with these nations, we learn their works. Now Baruch is saying, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. Because we're spiritually dead. Come on. And of their children. Of their children. Because the children, we, we are the children. We are the, the, the parents are dead. You understand? The children are also spiritually dead. That's what he's saying right there. Because the, 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 the kids, they learn from their parents. You understand? If the parents don't teach the children the laws of God, the children are also going to be spiritually dead. Right? Which have sinned before thee mm -hmm. and not hearkened unto the voice of the, their God. Right? For the which, for the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. 
Because of this, the plagues cleave unto us, the evils, the judgment, the curses, the reproach cleave upon us. That's why you see us now unto this very day, since the time we left Egypt unto this day. Next verse, come on. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, mm -hmm. but think upon thy power and thy name now at, the, at this time. So why is the Lord saying, remember not? You see what Baruch is praying? He says, remember not the iniquities of our forefathers. What did our forefathers do? Give me that in Jeremiah 16, verse 11. He says, remember not the iniquities of our forefathers. Why? Watch this. Jeremiah 16, verse 11. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verses 11. Read. Then shalt thou say unto them, because your fathers have forsaken me, say that's the, the reason why. That's the reason why he's saying what he's saying in Baruch. He says, remember not the iniquities of our forefathers. Why? Because our forefathers, they forsook the Lord. So the children also, what do you think the children are going to do? They're going to do the same thing and they're going to do it worse. Next verse. Come on. Keep going. And have walked after other gods. We have walked after other gods, the gods of these nations. Read. And have served them. Mm -hmm. And have worshipped them. Read. And forsaken me. And have not kept my law. Okay, I need you to read a little bit quicker. It says, and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. You see what it means to forsake the Lord? Jeremiah is teaching us what it means to forsake the Lord. It says what? When we don't keep God's commandments, we forsake the Lord. Because we're not, we were not keeping God's commandments, it says what? We have walked after other gods and have served them and have worshipped them and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. Watch the next verse. Come on. And ye have done worse than your fathers. Mm -hmm. For behold, you walk everyone after the imagination of his evil heart. Read. That they may not hearken unto me. You see what the Lord is saying right there? It says, you see what he's saying? He says, the children have done worse than their fathers. We've done worse than our fathers. Because he says, you walk everyone after the imagination of his evil heart that they may not hearken unto me. So if we're not hearkening unto the voice of the Lord our God, who are we listening to? Who are we following? Who are we worshiping? Who are we envy? We envy our oppressors and the idols that come with them and the customs that goes with worshiping and saving their idols. You see that thing? That's how we are defiled with the dead. That's what Baruch is saying right there. Go back to Baruch now, Okay. Baruch chapter 3, verse 5 again. The book of Baruch chapter 3, verse 5. Read. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers. Because what did they do? They forsook the Lord. You understand? They walked, they walked after other gods. That's why it says, remember not the iniquities of our forefathers because of what they did. And they taught the children to follow the same thing, to do worse than them. You understand? You know what? Give me Psalm 78 real quick. Psalm 78. Because in the book of Psalms, the same thing is explained because we keep doing the same things over and over. We don't learn. That's what the Lord is saying. That's why we were, run, we were rounding in the wilderness for how long? For 80 years. I mean, for 40 years, we're in the wilderness. I'm thinking about when we ruled the nations for 80 years under David and Solomon. Okay, watch this. Give me Psalm 78. Okay. Psalm 78, verse 8. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 8. Read. And might, and might not be as their fathers. You see that thing? It says the children might, so that the children might not be as their fathers. What did their fathers do? Keep going. A stubborn and rebellious generation. You see what our forefathers was? Stubborn and rebellious. You just read the book of, read the first five books and see how stubborn and rebellious our forefathers was in the wilderness. What do you think the children are going to be? Worse than their fathers. Okay, come on. A generation that sets not the heart aright mm -hmm. and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. When whose spirit was not steadfast with God. That's what he's saying right there. Why? Because we hated God's commandments. You understand? We hated God's laws. 
we did not want to apply that which was commanded of us. That's what he's saying right there. That's what it says, and might not what? They might not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. So now go back to Baruch 3. Baruch chapter 3, verse 7, verse 5 again. The book of Baruch chapter 3, verse 5. Remember not the iniquities of our fathers. Mm -hmm. Of our forefathers. But think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. Do you see what he's saying? He says, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. I Meaning deliver us for your sake, not for our sake, because we're wicked as hell. So, but he's saying deliver us for your name's sake. You understand? Because of what? Because of the, the promise he made to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he would not forsake his seed. Watch this. Give me that in 2nd Ezra. Okay? 2nd Ezra chapter 4. I believe that's what I want. Just popped into my head. So bear with me. 2nd Ezra 4. Okay? No, 2nd Ezra 3. 2nd Ezra chapter 3 and verse 15. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 15. Read. And made us an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. You see that thing? So Baruch is saying, deliver us for thy name's sake. Because the Most High God, he made a covenant with our forefathers. Jump up to verse 13. Watch this. Because all these evils that we've been doing, they are generational. They've been happening throughout history. You understand? So that's why it says we must read the history so we see the evils we've done so we can learn from our mistakes and not repeat the same mistakes. Read verse 13 again now. Read verse 13. Second book of Ezra chapter 3 verse 13. Read. When they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among thee, whose name was Abraham. Come on. Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showest thy will. You see what he's saying? And unto him only thou showest thy will. Next verse, come on. And madest an everlasting covenant with him, mm -hmm. promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. You see what he's saying? He says he promised Abraham that he will never forsake his seed. So now Baruch is pleading with the Most High God. He says, it says, listen, remember, it says what? Go back to around Bushite. Go back to Baruch 3, verse 5 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. You see what he's saying? He says, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. Let's deal with that power just for a second. Give me that in Baruch 2, okay? Give me Baruch chapter 2 and verse 11. Watch this. Baruch 2 verse 11. We read it earlier in the prayer. Baruch 2 verse 11. Let's read that. The book of Baruch chapter 2 verse 11. Mm -hmm. And now, O Lord God of Israel, that haste that hast brought thy people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and high arm, and with signs, and with wonders, and with great powers. Come on. And has gotten thyself a name as appeared this day. You see what the Lord did? The Lord got himself a name. When he destroyed the Egyptians, he got himself a name, a reputation, because that Exodus is still spoken about today. That's why Baruch says, deliver us for thy name's sake, you understand, for thy name and for thy power. He showed his power in Egypt when he destroyed them and delivered us. You understand? So Baruch is mentioning it right here. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 1. Okay? 2nd Ezra chapter 1 verse 10. We're going to read down. We're explaining the power that the Lord showed among the nations when he destroyed the Egyptians, a powerhouse, and he delivered his children us this day. Read that. 2nd Ezra 1. Verse 10, come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 1. You know what? Verse... Start of verse 7. Second book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 7. Read. Am not I even 
he that brought them out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. But they have provoked me unto wrath and despised my counsels. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, am not I even he that brought them out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage? But they have provoked me unto wrath and despised my counsel. So the Lord keep reminding us what he did for us. Because Israel has selective amnesia. We keep forgetting the great things that the Lord did for us. The marvelous things, the glorious things that the Lord has done among all that live was still spitting in his face. You see that thing right there? So we need to repent, get our minds right, and be grateful. Because right now, the way we act, we are ungrateful children. We need to repent from that thing and pay for our sins and pay our debt because we owe the Lord. We owe him for what he did for us. You understand? We owe the most High God when he sent his son to die for us so we can get the chance to, we can give us the chance to get the kingdom. That's why now we are getting our minds right. He's remembered, he, he remembered us by waking us up so we can remember who we are. Jump down to verse 10 now. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter one, verse 10. Read. Many kings have I destroyed for their sakes. Uh -huh. Come on. Pharaoh with his servants and all his power have I smitten down. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, many kings have I destroyed for their sakes. Now he's given an example. He says, Pharaoh with his servants and all his power have I smitten down. For whose sakes? For our sakes. You understand? Come on. All the nations have I destroyed before them. Mm -hmm. And in the east, I have scattered the people of two provinces. Read. Even of Tyrus and Sidon. Mm -hmm. And have slain all their enemies. You see what he's saying? He says, even in the east, he says, I, what? He says, I have I scattered the people of two provinces, even Tyrus and Sidon. That's the, that's, these are Hamites. Because he kicked them out the land. You understand? For our sakes, to give us that land that he made, he promised that he would give to Abraham. Read. Speak thou therefore unto them, say, Thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. I led you through the sea. Come on. And in the beginning, gave you a large and safe passage. That's the Exodus. Come on. I gave you Moses for a leader mm -hmm. and for a priest. You see what he's saying? He says, I led you through the sea. You understand? And in the beginning gave you a large and say, that's the Red Sea. And in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. I gave you Moses for a leader and Aaron for a priest. Next verse. Come on. I gave you light in a pillar of fire. Mm. And great wonders have I done among you. Come on. Yet have you forgotten me, said the Lord. You see what he's saying? Then I'm going to show you really how rebellious and ungrateful Israel is. The most High God has to use the prophets to remind us of the things he did for us. That's why when the Lord returns, there's going to be death and destruction on this earth. Hmm. The judgment that's coming on this earth, listen, don't nobody has seen it or imagined it. We read about it, but we can't really imagine this thing. How terrible and great is going to be when the Lord returns. So now he's reminding us, he's using the prophets you understand, this is mercy of the Lord right here. Because we tend to forget. Okay, read that again, verse 14. Second book of Ezra, chapter 1, verses 14. Read. I gave you light in a pillar of fire. Mm -hmm. And great wonders have I done among you. Come on. Yet, have you forgotten me, said the Lord. Read. Thus said the Almighty Lord, the quails were as a token for you. I gave you tents for your safeguard. Nevertheless, you murmured there. You see what he's saying? He says the quails were as a token for you because we're complaining that we are tired of the manna. We are tired of the manna. The Lord said, okay, I'm going to give you quails. Even that, we just devoured it in one go. We ate everything. And after that, the Lord said, you know, I'm going to put you to death. I'm going to destroy you for this thing. He says, I gave you tents for your safeguard. That's, that, this goes into the Feast of Tabernacles. That's coming up in October. He says, I gave you tents for your safeguard. Nevertheless, ye murmured there. We complained and complained. Read. And triumph, and triumph not in my name, 
for the mm-hmm. destruction of your city. Come on. But ever to this day, do ye yet murmur? You see that it says, and triumphant not in my name for the destruction of your enemies. Meaning we did not what? We did not give praise to the Lord when he destroyed our enemies. That's why we read the book. Go, go, give me Psalms 149. That's why he said what he said here. Okay. Psalms 149 verse 1. He says, we did not triumph in, in, the, in the name of the Lord when he destroyed our enemies for our sakes. We're supposed to find joy in that. We're supposed to praise the Lord for that thing. And we stop doing that. Psalms 149 verse 1. You better praise the Lord your God. Read that. The book of Psalms 149 verse 1. Mm-hmm. Praise ye the Lord. Mm-hmm. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Read. And his praise in the congregation of the saints. The Lord is commanding us as he says, praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. This is the congregation of saints right here. Read. Israel rejoice in him that made it. Mm-hmm. The children of Zion be joyful in their king. Because right now we are not. We, are not, we, we don't rejoice in the Lord that made us. You understand? It says, let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. We must be joyful in the king because he delivered us out of the hands of Pharaoh. We must remember that thing. Watch this. Give me Psalms 148 verse 1. The book of Psalms chapter 148 verse 1. Mm-hmm. Praise ye the Lord. Mm. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Come on. Praise ye him. All his angels. Praise ye him. All his hosts. All his hosts. All his armies. Psalms 150 verse 1. The Lord keeps saying it over and over, but we just forget because Israel have a selective amnesia. Psalms 150 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Psalms chapter 150 verse 1. Read. Praise ye the Lord. Mm-hmm. Praise God in his sanctuary. Uh-huh. Praise him in the firmament of his power. You see that thing right there? It says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Meaning in the camp. Praise the Lord. He says, praise him in the firmament of his power. Go ahead. Praise, praise him for his mighty acts. You see that part right there? That's what we were just reading in 2nd Ezra 1. Is as praise him for his mighty acts. The mighty acts that the Lord did was for whose sake? For our sakes. You understand? So we must rejoice in the king. We must rejoice in the Lord that made us. Okay, come on. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. According to his excellent greatness. Next verse, come on. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Mm Mm-hmm. Praise him with the sound tree and harp. Now, I want to touch on that. Read verse 3 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 150, verse 3. Mm-hmm. With the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound tree and harp. You see that part right there when it says, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. That's why we sound the alarm when we go to camp. We sound the alarm before we pray. Why? Because there's a reason why we have, that's why we were, we were just celebrating the memorial of blowing of trumpets. You understand? So here the, David is saying, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Because there was a meaning behind the sounding of the trumpet. Watch this. Give me that in Numbers 10. Okay, N- Numbers chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 1. Numbers chapter 10. We are, you better praise the Lord your God. Because, because a lot of the times, we are sulking. We always complain. We don't see the best in nothing. We always complaining. Just be grimy Negroes. Them days are over. Okay. We, you better praise the Lord your God. We must get into the habit of praising the Most High. Watch this. Numbers 10 verse 1. Come on. The book of Numbers chapter 10 verse 1. Mm-hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying. Great. The two trumpets of silver. Mm-hmm. O peace shall thou make them. Read. That thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly mm-hmm. and for the journeying of the camps. 
So the trumpet, these two trumpets, the trumpets of silver, it says you must make them for what? For the calling of the assembly, that's the congregation, and what? And for the journeys of the camp, when we were traveling in the wilderness, when we were moving from place to place, when the Lord was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Okay, come on. Come on, verse 3. Stay with me. The book of Numbers is in verse 3. Really? And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. This is order right here. This is order and structure and command. He says, when they shall blow with them, when they blow the silver trumpets, he says, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. You have to imagine this thing. When the trumpets are blown, Israel is moving in with one accord, in order, okay? And they didn't break their ranks. Next verse, come on. And if they blow but one trumpet, mm -hmm. then the princes, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. So he says, but if you blow but with one trumpet, he says, the princes, the princes goes into the captains. You understand? He says, they, what, they shall what? They shall what? He says, they shall gather themselves unto thee. If you blow, he says, then the princes, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. If they blow with one trumpet. Go ahead. When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east part shall go forth. You see that thing? That's the alarm now. You see, if you've got the trumpet, then you've got the alarm. It says, when you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east part shall go forward. So the ones that are on the east will go forward. Go ahead. When you blow an alarm, the second time. Come on. The camps that are on the south side shall take their journey. Mm -hmm. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. You see that thing? When we, were move, when we were in the wilderness, we were not just moving like ragamuffins. We were not moving like we are toy toy. No, 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 no. There was an order. You understand? Because we were all 12. So when the alarm was blown, the camps that was on the east, they'll move forward. When the second time it was blown, the ones that were on the south will move forward. That's how we moved when we were in the wilderness. We were not just walking like you see that movie Exodus with, with the white people, obviously. You see the way they were moving? No, no, it wasn't like that when we were in the wilderness. It was not like that. Okay, come on. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, mm -hmm. but ye shall not sound an alarm. Because the alarm was preparation for war. That's why it's called an alarm. But he says, but when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow. That's why now, before we pray, we blow the alarm, we blow the trumpet. You understand? Read. And the sons of Aaron, mm -hmm. the priest, shall blow with the trumpets. Come on. And they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. That's why today we are still blowing the trumpet. You understand? Next verse. Watch this. Now I want to show you something. You see when we read in the book of Psalms, it says, praise ye the Lord. Okay. Psalms 150 verse 3 says, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. I want to show you why we're supposed to praise him. Watch the next verse. Read what you got. The book of Numbers, chapter 10, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, read, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God. And ye shall be saved from your enemies. Now, that's the key right there. It says, and if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you. Are we not oppressed right now? Yes. When we go out to camp, we blow the trumpet. Don't think that that's for nothing. No, we are communicating with the Most High to deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Don't take, don't take it for granted. It's very necessary. It's all spiritual. You understand? When we blow the trumpet, when we go to camp, before camp starts, we blow with the trumpet is because we are communicating with the Most High God because we are going to war in the land against those that oppress us 
He says, then he shall blow an alarm with the trumpet and he shall be remembered before the Lord your God and he shall be saved from your enemies. The Lord will remember, will hear the trumpet being blown. The most High God will deliver us out of, our, out of the hands of our enemies. Now watch this. Give me that in Numbers 31 verse 1. Watch this. Numbers 31 verse 1. The book of Numbers, chapter 31, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Mm -hmm. Afterward shall thou be gathered unto thy people. So now this is war against the children of Midian, the Midianites. We are going to war with them, Watch against them. Watch this. Read. Afterward thou shalt be gathered unto thy people. Mm -hmm. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves to the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. He says, Arm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. So when we go to war, we are avenging the Lord of these enemies that are oppressing us mainly Esau and all the people that support him to oppress us, which is all the nations on earth. Read. Come on. Of every tribe a thousand, mm -hmm. throughout all the tribes of Israel, shall ye send to, to the war. So a thousand men from each tribe. So ye had 12,000 men ready for war. From each thousand, a thousand from each tribe. So you have 12,000 men that are had to go to war. Come on. Come on. So they were delivered out of the thousands of Israel. Mm -hmm. Out of a thousand of every tribe, 12,000 armed for war. Uh, 12,000 armed for war. But watch the next verse. This is our forefather Phineas. Read that. Come on. The book of Numbers of 31, verse 6. And Moses sent them to the war. A thousand of every tribe. Them and Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to the war. With the holy mm -hmm. instruments and trumpets Come to on. blow in his hand. You see that thing? Phineas had a trumpet to blow in his hand. It says what? It says, and the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. Watch this. Come on. And they warned against, and they warred against the Midianites, mm -hmm. as the Lord commanded Moses. And they slew all the males. You see that? We see what happened. And we slew all the males because guess what? Guess before the war started, what did Phineas do? He blew the trumpet. Before the war began, he blew the trumpet because that's how we communicated with the Most High. So when we are at camp, we blow the trumpet before the, the camp starts. Guess what? That's the same thing that we are doing this day. The same thing our forefathers was doing back then. We are doing it today. Go back to Psalms now. 150 verse 3. Let's read that again. The blowing of the trumpet was to communicate with the Lord, the Lord to remember our cry that when we go to war to fight against our enemies, he will deliver our enemies into our hands. That's why we blew the trumpet. That's one of the reasons why we blew the trumpet. You understand? Before war. Okay, Psalms 150 verse 3. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 150 verse 3. Come on. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. You see that thing? Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Now we understand why. We must praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Even on our solemn feast days, we must do the same thing. You understand? Come on. Praise him with the sound tree and harp. Mm -hmm. Come on. Praise him with the timbrel and tent. Mm -hmm. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Come on. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Mm -hmm. Upon the high sounding symbols. Read. These are different musical instruments here. Meaning what? Music. Praise the Lord. Read. That everything that hath breath 
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You better praise the Lord for that thing. Everything that has breath. What is the breath? Give me that in Proverbs 7 verse 2. Everything that has breath. Because if you have breath, you're no longer dead. You're not spiritually dead. You are alive now because you have the commandments in your spirit. Read what you got. Proverbs 7 verse 2. The book of Proverbs 7 verse 2. Keep mm -hmm. my commandments and live. Mm -hmm. and, my law, and my law as the apple of thine eye. You see what he's saying? Keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. That's what he's saying right there. He says that everything that has breath, praise him because you have the commandments in you now. You better praise the Lord for waking you up. Okay? Go back to 2nd Ezra. Because I know some people have forgotten. Go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 1. Okay? 2nd Ezra 1 verse 15 again. We're going to read down. Read verse 16. 2nd Ezra 1 16. Let's read that. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 1 verse 16. Mm -hmm. And triumph not in my name for the destruction of your enemies. Read. But ever to this day do he yet murmur. You see what he's saying? We did not triumph, and we did not triumph in his name for the destruction of our enemies. But what? But ever to this day do he yet murmur. We are still complaining unto this day. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Go ahead. Where are the people done for you? When you were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness, did ye not cry unto me? You see what he's saying? Where are the benefits that I have done for you? Hold on. Where are the benefits that I have done for you? Meaning what? Where's the return on my investment? That's what he's asking. Because we must pay for the debt. We owe the Lord. We owe the most High God for the stuff that he's done for us. He's not free. He's the original OG. You always pay for your debt. Don't get it twisted. You're either going to pay for your debt through death or you pay for your debt through keeping the commandments. And when you do that, you get the reward, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth. You understand? And we all pushing for what? For the payment, the debt that we pay, not by, by us being put to death, but by us getting the kingdom. You understand? We keep the commandments, which is our gateway to receive the kingdom. Okay, read that again. Verse 17. Second book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Where are the benefits that I have done for you? Read. When you were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness, did ye not cry unto me? Read. Saying, why hast thou brought us into the wilderness to kill us? It had been better for us to have served the Egyptians than to die in this wilderness. You can't make this stuff up. You see, Israel is so diabolically ungrateful that we have no shame whatsoever. Look at, the, look at the conversations. Look at the stuff, the evil that is coming out of our mouths. You understand? Ungrateful children. But now that the Lord is waking us up, we better understand and acknowledge our offenses and repent. You understand? So that the Lord can see our, our humility as we are humbling ourselves to him. And then the Lord will forgive us of our sins. He will have compassion on us and forgive us of our sins. Now watch this. Now go back to Baruch now. Baruch chapter 3. Let's go back to Baruch. Okay. Let's go back to Baruch. Baruch chapter 3. Okay. Baruch chapter 3 and verse, verse 5. Baruch 3 verse 5. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 5. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. We went over the power of the Lord and his name because he had a reputation. The Most High God has a reputation of the great things that he do for us. You understand? Read. Come on. For thou art the Lord our God and mm. thee, Lord, will we praise? That's the what we just read in the book of Psalms 150, 149. You understand? 147, 148. That's the same thing we were reading. We it says, but but it says, What and thee, O Lord, will we praise? We better praise our Lord. Keep going. Verse 7, come on. And for 
and for this cause that was put thy fear in our hearts. Mm -hmm. To the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. Right. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Now that's heavy right there. This verse right there, this is a heavy verse. Read four and seven together. Watch this. The book of Baruch chapter three, verse four. Mm -hmm. Lord, O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and of their children, which have sinned before thee and not hearken unto the voice of their God. For the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. And for this cause that was put thy fear in our hearts. Stop right there. It says, for this cause thou hast put fear in thy, it says, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts. Because we've sinned against the Lord, and we taught our children to sin against the Lord our God as well, it says, for this cause, because of this, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts. The most High God has put fear in our hearts. Because when you investigate, and you look at the history, how the nations were able to conquer us and do so much evil to us, to shame us, you will see really the, the level of fear that the Lord put in our, in our hearts that our enemies were able to conquer us. They didn't con conquer us because we were weak. They didn't conquer us because we, are, we were not the mightiest nation on earth. No, they conquered us because the Most High God put fear in our hearts. That's the reason why these nations were able to conquer us. Now watch this. Give me Leviticus 26 verse 36. Leviticus 26 verse 36. Watch this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verses 36. Mm -hmm. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the land of their enemies. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the land of their enemies. God is saying, we are the, le we are the ones that are left alive this day. The Lord says he will put fear in our hearts. Faintness, that's fear. He says, in the land of their enemies. That's why now you are scared of everything. You are scared of losing your job. You are scared of getting sick. You are scared of dying. You are scared of everything. You understand? You are always in the midst of fear. Why? Because the Lord did that thing. Because we broke his commandments. He is doing that to us in the lands of our enemies. That's why the nations are able to do what they've done to us. And still doing to us. But now as we're waking up, we can no longer move with the spirit of fear. You understand? Read that again, verse 36. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 36. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them. The sound and of they... a shaken leaf. The sound of a shaken leaf. You know when a leaf is shaken from the tree by the wind? Do you hear the sound of it? No, you don't hear the sound of a shaken leaf that is falling from a tree. You don't hear it. But the Lord is saying the sound of a shaken leaf is going to chase you. You're going to be running. You're going to be so scared. You're going to be scared of the sound of a shaken leaf that you cannot even hear when it falls. Right. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them. Mm. And they shall flee as fleeing from a sword. Read. And they shall fall when none pursue it. You see what the Lord is saying? You're going to be running away from a, a, the sound of a shaking leaf as though you are being chased with a sword. Meaning what? He's letting you know how easy these nations were able to conquer us because the Lord took his power from us. We was weak. You understand? And the nations were able to what? To conquer us and shame us. Because of what? Because we rejected God's commandments. You understand? Give me the book of Judith chapter 5 verse 16. The book of Judith chapter 5. River 17, start of 17. 
the book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 17. And whilst they sinned not before their God, they prospered. Mm -hmm. Because the God that hated iniquity was with them. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, whilst they sinned not before their God. When we kept the commandments, it says we prospered. We were a prosperous nation. We ruled the nations on earth. We forced them to pay tax. They paid tax, tribute, and custom unto us, and tolls. They paid, they, they brought their riches to us. That's when we kept these commandments. That's when we prospered as a nation. Because we were not sinning. We were keeping his commandments. You understand? But watch what happens when we departed from his commandments. Next verse. Read. Because the God that hated iniquity was with them. Read. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, mm -hmm. they were destroyed in many battles very soon. You see what he's saying? When we departed from the Lord, our God, he says what? They were destroyed in many battles very soon. We were destroyed. And the way we were destroyed, it was easy for the nations to do it. Because the Lord we read in Leviticus, it says, the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase us as though we are running from a sword. So he's letting you know how easy was it going to be for the nations to conquer us. Because these nations know who they have in captivity. They know because they read our book. They know how great we are when we keep the laws. They know how fierce we are when we keep the law. They know how terrible and great we are when we keep God's commandments and we are in one spirit, one mind. That's why they are spending billions and billions of rands to keep the Negro at the bottom, to keep the black woman, to keep the black woman uh, separated from her black man and to keep her independent from her black man and to hate her black man. They keep the black man, um, they, they, they keep the black man what? Uh, docile. They keep us docile. They keep the black man sagging his pants, drinking all day. You understand that? That's what they do. Because they know if you were to put the beer bottle down, to put the cigarette down, to pick the wig down and pick up this book, then they know they are in trouble. The nations know this. Don't get it twisted. Okay? Read verse 18 again. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 18. Mm. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very soon. Great. And were led captives into a land that was not theirs. Come on. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground. Mm -hmm. And their cities were taken by the enemies. No, you see that thing? And their cities were taken by the enemies. So our, our, it says what? He says they were led captive into a land that was not theirs. That's why today we are in South Africa and so forth. There's an example. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground because the Babylonians destroyed it. And later on, fast forward to today in these last days, 70 AD, when our temple was destroyed by the white men, the Romans, and their cities were taken by the enemies. The Gentiles are in our land now calling themselves Jewish. And the Arabs also, they say, what? Well, that's their land. That's not their land. That's our land. Now, but the Lord is telling you here, says, and their cities were taken by the enemies. It's not just one. It's many, more than one. Enemies would take our land. The Arabs, the Palestinians, you understand? And Amalek, Jewish, white people calling themselves Jewish. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. That's what would happen to us. Because of what? Because of our sins. Now go back to Baruch 3, verse 7 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts, to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. Stop right there. It says to the intent, so the objective, that the reason why the Lord put fear in our hearts is so that what we may call upon his name and praise him in the lands of our captivity. Because if the Lord didn't put fear in our heart, what do you think we would do? We're still moving with the spirit of what? The spirit of arrogancy. Thinking that our minds, they are too powerful. 
we have power them our minds are powerful we can do whatever we, we will trust upon ourselves no the lord did this to do what for us to trust upon him not to trust on ourselves that's why he's doing this thing that's why he put fear in our hearts you understand that we may call upon his name watch this give me before we get there actually hmm. keep going Read, finish that verse. That's my parents, sir. Baruch 3, verse 7. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 7. And for this cause that was put thy fear in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name and mm -hmm. praise in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquities of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Now that's heavy right there. So you see when it says to the intent that we may call upon his name. Give me Psalms 18 verse 3. Give me Psalms chapter 18 verse 3. Let's read that. The book of Psalms chapter 18 verse 3. Read. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. You see what he's saying right there? I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Because when we call upon the Lord, the Lord will deliver us from the hands of our enemies. That's why it says to the intent that we may call upon his name. You understand that? Jump down to verse 6, come on. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. I did what? Unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Read verse 6 again. Let's look at some delay again. Read verse 6 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 6. Read. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. I did what? I called upon the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. I called upon the Lord. I called upon the Lord. Don't call upon Julius Malema. Don't call upon Cyril Ramaphosa. Don't call upon Helen Zille. No, 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 no. You call upon the Lord in your distress. You don't call upon your political party. You don't call upon your minister. Or your mm -mm. You call upon the Lord in your distress. That's what he's saying right there. Read again. Chapter 18, verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. Mm -hmm. He heard my voice out of his temple. Come on. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. That's why the Lord put faintness in our hearts, so that we call upon him, not call upon the people upon this earth that don't have our best interest at heart, because they don't care. They only care about their pockets and their bellies. That's why you see now, because during this campaigning season, this voting season, everybody now, they want, they are selling our people just dreams. They are selling our people what the sun and the moon and whatever, because they know they're not going to deliver upon those promises. And it's a vicious cycle that keep on going. You understand? Them days are over. The prophets are back. Watch this. Give me, go back to Baruch 3 verse 7 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 7. Read. And for this cause, I was put thy fear in our hearts. Mm -hmm. To the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. Read. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our fathers that have sinned before thee. He says, he says, he says because we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Now watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 1. Okay, Deuteronomy 30 verse 1. He says, we've called, up, we've, we've called to mind all the iniquities of our forefathers. We are calling to mind all the sins of our forefathers. Okay, watch this. Deuteronomy 30 verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee 
the blessing and the curse the what i am the blessing and the curse he says it shall come to pass meaning future prophecy these things are come upon thee what things the blessings will come upon us during the time of david and solomon when we ruled we had the kingdom of heaven and uh, on earth those were the blessings and the curse you understand the judgments that came upon us when we broke the commandments you understand he says it's going to happen when we're going to have the blessings and we're going to have the curse where right now we are living in those curses right now right which are the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 1 and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee the blessing and the curse which I have said before thee and thou shalt carry them to mind no no all the no 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 whether no. the Lord thy God hath driven no you are not reading it correctly read it correctly read it again Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 1. Come on. And it shall come to pass when all these things that come upon thee and the curse which I have sold thee and thou shalt call thee to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. You see what the Lord is saying? Is as we going to call the blessings and the curses to mind, which the Lord will set before us. He says, which I've said before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. So now, what are we calling to mind? We are calling to mind the curses because right now we are in the lands of our captivity. The blessings is when we were in the land. We are not in our land now. We are in the lands of our enemies. So what are we calling to mind? We are calling to mind the curses. You understand? The, what we've done wrong. How are we calling them to mind? Because the prophets are bringing them out. There's things that we did wrong against the Lord our God. Read verse 2. Come on. And shall return unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And shall to obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children and all thine heart and with all thy soul. You see what he's saying? He says, shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children. Thou and thy children. Meaning this is not just about us. It's about our children as well. The same way our forefathers were, were, were rebellious in the wilderness and they were punished and put to death and the children suffered the consequences. Guess what? Today, as we coming back into this truth, we and our children must know these laws. So we, we and our children can get delivered. Us and our children. This is nation building right here. Go ahead. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. The Lord will do what? The Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. The Lord our God will turn our captivity, meaning what? No more slavery, no more captivity. We're going to go back home. That's what he's saying. The Lord our God will turn our captivity. Read. And have compassion upon thee. Mm -hmm. And will return and gather thee from all the nations. Whether the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. You see what he's saying? The Lord will what will turn our captivity and will have compassion on us and will return and gather thee from all nations, whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. The Lord is going to what? When the Lord de delivers us from all these nations, that's when the Lord will what will turn our captivity. That's when the Lord will have compassion on us. Now watch this. Go back to Baruch now, chapter 3, verse 7 again. Baruch 3, verse 7. The book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts. Mm -hmm. The intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. Read. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our fathers that have sinned before thee. You see that thing? We have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. That's what we are doing right now. 
We are calling all our sins to remembrance. You understand? Next verse. Watch this. Watch how this comes together. Come on. The book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. With our scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Read. And to be subject to payments. According to all the iniquities of our fathers. Which have departed from the Lord our God. So now it says we we are going to be we must we are subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers. So us being subject to payments goes into us paying the most high God back for what we did to him. For sinning against the Lord, we must pay him back. That means we are indebted to him. We owe him. So that's why it says subject to payments. What are we supposed to pay back? We must pay back our debts so the Lord can forgive us. You understand? How do we do that? We call the curses to mind. We keep his call. We bethink ourselves. We acknowledge our sins and we repent. We keep God's commandments. That's how we pay for what we owe. Watch this. Now give me Baruch chapter 2 verse 30. You understand? You're not going to be able to be subject to these payments if you don't bethink yourself. How's that going to happen? Baruch 2 verse 30. The only way you can pay for these debts is if you call your the curses to mind, you remember who you are and you repent in the lands of your captivity. Baruch 2 verse 30. Read that. The book of Baruch chapter 2 verse 30. Read. For you, that they would not hear me. Mm -hmm. Because it is a stiff-necked people. Read. But in the land of the captivities, they shall remember themselves. We're going to bethink ourselves. We will remember who we are because the prophets will bring the scriptures out. We will, cause the, we will call these cases to mind. That's what he said right there. Next verse. And shall know that I am the Lord their God. For I will give them a heart and ears to hear. You see that what the Lord says he will do for us? He will give us an, an heart and an, an ears to hear. Because guess what? Without these laws, be, be, without us not knowing who we are, guess what? We don't have an ear and a mind to hear what the Lord is saying. Although our people are flooding the Christian church, they are, listen, they are blind to this book. They are foreign to it until the Lord wakes their spirit up. How is he going to do that? He will send the prophets to the street corners to wake the people up. That's what we're reading here. Watch this. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 26. Read. A new heart also will I give you. Mm -hmm. And a new spirit will I put within you. Read. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Come on. And I'll give you a heart of flesh. You see what the Lord is saying? That's the same thing that Baruch was saying. He says, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. Here the Lord says, I will want a new heart also will I give unto you. The Lord will renew our spirit. He will give us a new mind. Okay? And a new spirit will I put within you. The spirit of Christ he will put within us. Not the spirit of white Jesus. You understand? Not the mind of our oppressor. No, no. He says, I will give you a new mind and I will put a new spirit in you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Meaning what? The stubborn heart. The stony heart is the stubborn heart. It says, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Man, I'm going to give you a heart that will be able to hear the laws of God coming out. And you will apply them to your life. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? Read. Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. Mm -hmm. And cause you. To walk in my statutes. Come on. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. You see what the Lord is saying he will do? He says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you. The Lord says, I'm going to make you do this thing. I'm going to cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Next verse. Read. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. 
Now that's beautiful right there. That's beautiful right there. Now jump down to verse 31. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 31. Mm -hmm. Then shall you remember your own evil ways. You see that thing right there? You will call these curses to mind. That's the same thing he's saying. He says, then shall ye remember your own evil ways. Because now, because the, the, the prophets are teaching us the, evil, the laws, now we start to see what we, are, what we were doing wrong, according to this Bible. Now, guess what we are doing now? We repent now. As we repenting, because guess what? If let's say you are eating pork and the, the scriptures are brought out to you, listen, you're not supposed to eat that because it's against the dietary law. Guess what? You will remember your own evil ways now. You say, wait a minute. So which means this whole time when I was eating pork, I was doing evil. That's what the Lord wants, for you to be ashamed of your own evil ways so you can repent. You understand that? Read verse 31 again. The book of Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verse 31. Read. Then shall you remember your own evil ways. Come on. And your doings that were not good. And your doings that were not good. Because the way we were doing things in the world without these laws, we were doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Read. And shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Now, that's heavy right there. It says you're going to loathe yourself. You're going to hate yourself in your own sight for your sins that you committed against the Lord and for your abominations that we committed against the Lord. Because now the Lord is going to make us to be ashamed of what we was doing. That's why now we, the Lord says, I'm going to give you a new heart. I'll give you, your, I'll give you an, an heart and ears to hear. You will remember what you've done. You want to re repent. You want to fix it. Go back to Baruch 2, verse 31 now, again. The book of Baruch, chapter 2, verses 31. Mm -hmm. And shall know that I am the Lord, their God. Read. I will give them an heart and ears to hear. Next verse, come on. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity mm -hmm. and think upon my name. You see that thing right there? That's why we celebrate the new moon. You see why? Why are we doing that? He says, they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. That's what we're doing. You keep the Sabbath, you are praising the Lord in the name, you are praising the Lord in the name of your captivity. You celebrate the new moon. You put on fringes. You see that thing right there? Sisters put on dresses, they cover their heads. You understand? They stop relaxing their hair. They love their beautiful black hair. Guess what? You are praising the Lord in the land of your captivity and you are thinking upon his name, meaning his laws. Next verse. Come on. And return from their stiff neck mm -hmm. and from wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. You that, now we are, remembering, we are remembering the evil ways of our forefathers. You understand? We are remembering the evil ways of our forefathers which sinned before the Lord our God. Now we are remembering that we say, you know what? We don't want to do what our forefathers did. Now we are going to repent because we see the mistake they made. They understand the decision they made that were against the laws of God. Now we are coming back. We are learning from their mistakes so we don't repeat them. You understand? That's what the Most High God wants, for us to learn from our mistakes. Watch this now. Give me Matthew 6, verse 13. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 13. Watch how this comes together. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 13. Start at verse 12. Matthew 6, verse 12. Why did I write 13 here? Verse 12. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. Read that again. Read that again, verse 12. This is the Lord's prayer. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So now what Christ is saying is something similar to what Baruch is saying. Go back to Baruch 3, verse 8. Watch this.
the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Mm. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Come on. Scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Mm -hmm. And we are subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. So now he says we are subject to payments according to the iniquities of our forefathers. Now Christ comes back and says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So when we are subject to payments, guess what? We, we are begging the Lord to forgive us of our sins. That's what that means. Subject to payments. Because what are we paying? We paying for the sins that we committed against the Lord our God. How do we do that? We ask the Lord to forgive us. In order for the Lord to forgive us, we need to repent. You see that thing? So Baruch is saying the same thing that Christ is saying. Watch this. Give me Matthew 18, 21 now. No, go back to Matthew 6, verse 12. Then we're going to go to Matthew 18. Matthew 6, verse 12. Watch this. The book of Matthew 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You see that? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now Matthew 18, verse 21. Let's read that. Let's get some more on that. Let's understand what Christ was saying here in Matthew 6, verse 12. Okay, read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21. Read. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. So now this is the apostle Peter speaking to Christ. He says, my brother trespass against him. How many times must I forgive him? Seven times? Read. Jesus said that I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. You see what he, <laughs> you see what he said? Because he knows the Negro. Okay. Is as, but until 70 times seven, meaning as many times as you must, as you should, until 70 times seven. Go ahead. Verse 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened, like, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. So the kingdom, he says, he says, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened, this is a similitude now, likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. The king is talking about himself. He is going to take account of his servants, meaning examine his servants. Okay, come on. And when he had began the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 24, and when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. So now he says, when he began to reckon, meaning what? He's taking account of his servants. He says, one was brought to him, meaning one servant was brought to Christ, which owed him 10,000 talents. Remember what we read. He says, we are subject to payments. Now, this is a servant that's coming to Christ that owed Christ 10,000 talents, right? Watch this. Come on. But for as much as he had not, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. Now, wow, that's some heavy stuff right there. Read verse 25 again. The book of Matthew chapter 18 verses 25. Mm -hmm. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So you see, it says, because he did not have money to pay, it says, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. Watch this. Give me Baruch 4 verse 6. This is some heavy stuff right here. Pay attention. Baruch 4 and 6. Read that. The book of Baruch chapter 4 
verse 6. Mm -hmm. He was sold to the nations. Not you. No, no, no. You are messing me up. Okay. Read verse 6 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 6. He was sold to the nations. Not for your destruction, but because you moved God to wrath. Mm -hmm. You were delivered unto the enemies. You see what happens? You see what's going on? You see what Christ is explaining here? You understand? In verse 25. So Baruch is explaining this. He says, you were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because he moved God to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies. So now what we're reading in Matthew 18, it says, for as, but, as, for, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded, to, commanded him to be sold. We were sold to the nations. Who did that? The Lord commanded us to be sold to these nations. You understand? And his wife. You see this thing right here? And his wife. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 verse 32. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 verse 32. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 32. Mm -hmm. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Stop right there. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the parents. It says, your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Mm-hmm. They shall be no might in thine hand. You're not going to have power, you understand? No military might, no economic might to get your sons and daughters back. So now your sons and daughters shall be given to another people, to another race of people, sold. You understand? The parents are going to what? Their eyes will look and fail with longing for their kids all the day long. And the parents will not have might in their hand. So which means that they were separating the parents, the children from their parents. They were separating mothers from their kids. They were separating fathers from their children. They were separating wives from their husbands. That's what this white man was doing. Okay, read verse 30, read verse 41 now. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 41. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. You see what he's saying? You're going to have sons and daughters, but you're not going to enjoy them because they're going to go into slavery. They're going to go into captivity. Now, that's heavy right there. Watch this. Verse 68. Remember, he said, he said his, his master, his, he says what? Um, he says, the Lord, his Lord commanded him to be sold, his wife and children. We just read, we just read about that. You understand? To be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had, and payment to be made. Now, read, read verse 68. Do you tell me 28? Verse 68. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I speak, thou shalt not see it, thou shalt see it no more again. Mm -hmm. And they, ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Now, what you want to see here is that it says, thou, it says what? You are going to be, you, the Lord will bring you into slavery again. That's what Egypt means, bondage. By the way of I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. You're not going to see your homeland again. And there, ye shall be sold to your enemies. When, once you get off the slave ships, you are going to be sold to your enemies, plural, for bond men, slave men, and bond women, slave women, and no man shall buy you. You see that bond men and bond women goes into what? Go back to um, uh, Matthew 18, verse 25. I want to show you something. Matthew 18, verse 25. Read that. The book of Matthew is chapter 18, verses 25. Mm-hmm. But for as much as he had to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold. Come on. And his wife 
Stop and right children. There. So now it says, it says, his Lord commanded him to be sold. He shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men. Remember, it says, him to be sold. So bond men, that's the him to be sold, and his wife, bond women. You see that thing? And children, your sons and daughters shall be given unto another people. Christ is repeating Deuteronomy 28. You understand? And all that he had, the goods that we have, I'm going to deal with that in a second, and payment to be made. Read verse 25 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 25. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, uh -huh. and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 68. Read. Really? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Stop right there. Right. Hold on. The law and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Remember what we just read in Luke 18. It says, but it says, his Lord commanded him to be sold. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. His Lord commanded him to be sold. You see that thing right there? This is some heavy stuff. Okay? By the way, what I speak unto thee, come on. Thou shalt see it no more again. Come on. And they, ye shall be sold unto mm. your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. You see that it says for bond men, meaning he is says him to be sold and his wife, bond women, and no man shall buy you. Remember what it says. It says, and payment to be made. What was the payment? You going into slavery, that was the payment for what? For your sins. You see that thing? Now you must be redeemed from that captivity because it says, and no man shall buy you. Now give me the book of Psalms 49. Watch this. Psalm 49 verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 49, verses 6. Mm -hmm. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. He says, they that what? They trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Watch this. Next verse. None of them can by, can by any means redeem his brother. Do what? None of them can by any means redeem his brother. He says none of them can by any means redeem, redeem his brother. Go ahead. No give to God a ransom for him. No give to God a ransom for him. No pay. No pay the Lord to get his brother back. Why? Because we sinned and no man was going to buy us. No one of our people was going to was able to redeem us from those conditions because the Lord commanded us to be sold and our wives and our children and payment to be made. You see that thing right there? Now, go back to Matthew 18 verse 25. The book of Matthew chapter 18 verse 25. Mm -hmm. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold mm. and wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. You see that thing? It says, and all that he had and all that he had and all that he had. Watch this. Give me second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 16. Okay. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 42. We're going to read down. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verses 42. He that occupieth merchandise, as he that hath no profit by it. You see that thing? We had merchandise. You understand? We had gold, diamond, silver, platinum. We had riches. You understand? 
It says, he that occupy merchandise, who's the he? That's us. And all that he had, like it says in Matthew, as, as, as what? As he that had no profit by it, because now, remember it says, and all that he had was taken, all everything we had was taken from us. Now we have no profit by our own merchandise. Somebody else does. You understand? Read. And he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. We build houses, but we're not going to dwell in those houses. Look at all these. Look at, the, look at how the world is built. Who's building the, 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 the world? Who's building the whole earth? We are. But we don't dwell in those places. The rich, they dwell in those places. Our enemies, our oppressors, they dwell in those places. You understand? Ray. He that soweth as if he should not reap. Mm -hmm. So also he that planted the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. You see that thing? We will sow in the land that our enemies took from us through colonization. You understand? As if he should not reap. We're not going to reap because our enemies will reap the fruits of our land. So also he that planted the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes because they, we gather the graves, but it's not for us and our children, but it's for them and their children. You understand? Read. They that marry, as they that shall get no children. Because our children will be taken into slavery. You understand? Read. And they that marry not, as the widows. It says, and they that marry not as the widows, because the husbands will be taken away from their wives. Read. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. We labor in vain because we don't get paid for our work, what is worthy, what is rightfully belong to us. Go ahead. For strangers shall reap their fruits. You see that thing right there? The strangers will reap our fruits. Who's the strangers? The other nations, they are the strangers. And they are reaping our fruits, our gold, our diamond, the fruits of the, the mineral resources upon this continent. Just I'm just mentioning Africa because this is the richest continent on earth. Africa is the richest continent on earth. Understand that. It says, for strangers shall reap their fruits, the Dutch, the British, the French, the Portuguese, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Europeans, the Americans, the Russians, they are reaping our fruits. Read. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery. No, 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 no. Read verse 46 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 46. For strangers shall reap their fruits mm -hmm. and spoil their goods. They spoiled our goods. They are still spoiling our goods right now because they are leaving our, our, our so-called countries in a desolate state. Read. Overthrow their houses. They, too, they kicked us out of our houses. Now we are living in the ghettos. Read. Read. And take their children captives. You see that thing? They took our children from us. Read. For in captivity and famine, Shall they get children? Now we getting we have children. We are getting children in our captivity, and what? And famine shall they be get children? Now in slavery and poverty, we are getting our children. We are struggling to even feed our children because we are in slavery and we are impoverished. Right. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, because they robbed us of everything we got. That's why it says, and all that he had in Matthew 18, 25. Come on. The more they deck their cities. They decorate their cities with our possessions that they robbed us off of. That's why you see all these cities, they've got gold, they've got diamonds, they've got all these materials. Where do they get them from? They get them from here. They decorate their cities with that. Read. Their houses their possessions, and their own persons. So they decorate their cities, their houses, their possessions they have, and their own persons, meaning they decorate themselves 
with the positions, the merchandise that they robbed us of. That's why they'd be wearing these gold diamond rings, the chain, the gold, the gold chains and all of that. Where do they get them from? Because Europe don't produce no gold. Where are they getting it from? They are getting it from here. Europe doesn't have no diamonds. America doesn't have none of that. Where are they getting it from? They're getting it from here. Ray. The more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. So now, that's it on that. Go back to Matthew 18, 25. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 25. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, mm. payments made. And payment to be made. What is the payment that must be made? Go back to Matthew 6, verse 12. This is the payment that must be made. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 12. Read. And forgive us our debts. Mm -hmm. We forgive our debtors. So the debt that must be paid, the payment that must be made is what? We now need to go back and acknowledge our offenses and repent. That's how we pay the Lord back for what we owe him. That's the subject to payments in Baruch 3, verse 8. Go back to Matthew 18, 25 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 25. Mm -hmm. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. This payment that must be made, the first payment that needed to be made was what? Us going into slavery, us being sold, our wives, our children, and everything that we had. And what and payment to be made, meaning what we must pay for, we must what we must serve our prison sentence. That's the payment. While we are serving our prison sentence, the Lord will wake us up to remember the evils that we've done so we can repent. Our journey of repentance, that's our that's us now paying the Lord back. You understand? So we're paying double. Think about it. We went into slavery, we were colonized, you know, we were sold on slave ships and so forth. That's the first payment. The second payment is what? Now we must repent and keep the laws of God. That's another payment that we must make. Double. You understand? Read. The servants therefore fell down mm -hmm. and worshiped, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I'll pay thee all. You see what he's saying? He says, the seven therefore fell down and worshipped him. Isn't that what we're doing right now? What That's what we're doing. You understand? He says, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Meaning what? I'm going to repent of all my sins. That's what the seven is saying. That's what we all must be. That's the mindset we must have. The same mindset that the seven have. Go ahead. Verse, 20, verse 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. Was what? Was moved with compassion. He said, then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, come on. And loosed him. And what? And loosed him. And loosed him from the what? From the dead. And forgave him. And forgave him. And loosed him, come on. And forgave him the debt. And forgave him the debt. You see that thing right there? And forgave him the debt. Now, hold this. We're coming back. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 30 now, verse 3. Deuteronomy 30, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 3. Read that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. Will do what? Will turn thy captivity. The Lord will turn our captivity. He will, he will lose. He was and loosed him. That's what we read in Matthew 18 27. 
and loosed him. The Lord will turn our captivity, come on. And have compassion upon thee. You see that thing? The Lord will turn our captivity and have compassion upon thee. That's the same thing we read in Matthew 18. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him. You see that thing? The Lord will turn our captivity because he had compassion upon us. Ray. And will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. You see that thing? Go back to Matthew 18, verse 27. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 27. Read. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion mm -hmm. and loved him and forgave him the debt. And forgave him the debt. You see what subject being subject to payment is? To be subject to payment, it means we need to pay, we need to pay the debt that we owe to the Lord. And when we pay the debt that we owe to the Lord, the Lord will have forgive, will the Lord will have compassion on us. He will lose us. You understand? He will turn our captivity and forgive, uh, uh, forgive us of our debts, of our sins. You understand? That's some heavy stuff. This is some heavy stuff right here. Read verse 27 again for me. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 27. Mm -hmm. The Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. So now you notice, read 26 again, read 26 and 27 together, but read verse 26 for now. The book of Matthew chapter 18, verse 26. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, mm. Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Watch this. Give me Sarah 17, 24. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17, verses 24. Come on. But unto them that repent, he granted them return. Mm -hmm. and comforted those that failed in patience. You see that thing right there? That's when he had compassion on them in verse 27 in Matthew 18. It says, but unto them that repent, he granted them return. Because the servant said what? He says, the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. That's what we're reading. But unto them that repent, he granted them return and comfort those that failed in patience. That's why the servant said, have patience with me. Go ahead. And comforted those that failed in patience. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Mm -hmm. Thy prayer before his face and offend less. And offend less. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Meaning what? You become less and less into debt. You understand? Because the Lord is having patience with you to pay all the debts that you owe. That's why we are subject to payments right now because we must pay all the debts that we owe to the Lord. You understand? Ray. Turn again oh. to the high. And turn away from iniquity. Mm -hmm. He will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health. Come on. And hate thou abomination vehemently. You see what he's saying right there? So now once the Lord is granting us return, guess what we must do? We make our prayer before his face and offend less. And guess what? The Lord will deliver us from what? From the darkness into the light of health. The Lord will allow us to get our minds right. So go back to Matthew 18, verse 26 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 26. Read. Servants therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, mm -hmm. Lord, have patience with me, 
and I will pay thee all. Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Come on. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Come on, verse 28 now. Watch this. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pen and hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Here comes the Negro. You can't make this stuff up. Here comes the Negro. Remember the Negro was what? He was owing 10,000. He says 10,000 talents. Now, after he was forgiven and given and what? And the Lord had for a forgive him of his debts, right? The Lord forgave him of his what? Of his sins. Now, the, the, now the tables are turned now. Go back to Matthew 6, verse 12. I want to show you something. I'm going to show you the mind of the Negro, okay? And we can't move like that as a nation now that we're coming into this truth. Matthew 6, verse 12. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You see, it says, forgive us our debts as forgive as we forgive our debtors. Now, the Lord forgave this servant that owed 10,000 talents, right, of his debt, which is the sins. The 10,000 is just letting you know of the multitude of the sins. You understand that? Now, go back to Matthew 18. Matthew 18, verse 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 28. Read. Same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid his hands on him mm. and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. You see that thing? You see, after he was forgiven of his sins, now he's seeing his own brother now. Now you see your brother, you see your sister, you understand that? that your sister has done something wrong to you, right? Now, when you see your sister, you would, your sister is owing you what? A hundred pence. So this is small compared to how much you owed the Lord and the Lord forgave you. Now you see your own brother. He says he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me that thou owest. He doesn't have the same compassion that the Lord had on him. You see that thing? That's the mind of the Negro. Keep going. And his fellow servants fell down at his feet and besought mm. him, saying, he, he begged him, come on. Have patience with me, and I will pay the all. He says, have patience with me, and I will pay the all. So the same thing he was begging the Lord for, now he's the brother is begging him for. Watch this. Keep going. And he would not. You see that part right there? He would not do it. That's the Negro right there. This is the mind of a ducky. Right here. You can always spot a Negro from afar. Mm -hmm. These are characteristics of the nig. Okay, these are nigs right here. Read that again, verse 30. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 30. Read. And he would not. He would not. He would not have patience with his brother. He would not patience with his sister. Come on. And cast him. No, no. And he. No. Read that again. Chapter 18, verse 30. Read. And he would not, mm -hmm. but went and cast him into prison mm. till he should pay the debt. You see what he did now? He cast that brother into prison till he should pay the debt. Now he's holding him prisoner. You understand? Because what? He done wrong to now you are beholding the brother captive because of this thing. Watch this. Next verse. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. They were very came, sorry because, hold on. They saw what was done. They were very sorry. Come on. And came and told unto the Lord all that was done. 
they came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Watch this. Then his Lord, after that he had called them, said unto him, O oh, the wicked servant. O oh, the what? O oh, the wicked servant. O oh, the wicked servant. Come on. I forgave thee all the debt because thou desirest me. You see what he's telling? You see, this is the Lord saying now. He says, oh, you wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, meaning the 10,000 talents, because thou desirest me, because you begged the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Read. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, mm -hmm. even as I had pity on thee? You see what the Lord is saying? Go back to Matthew 6, verse 12, so we can fully understand that prayer. Okay? The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 12. And forgive us our debts as mm -hmm. we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. You see that part right there? And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We went over a class a, a while back. The power of forgiveness. Okay, I need to look for that class and upload it because it goes very well with this. Okay, go back. Matthew chapter 18. Read verse 34 now. The book of Matthew chapter 18 verse 34. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. You see what he's saying? He says, and his Lord was wroth, meaning the Lord was angry and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Now watch this. We coming back here. Give me the book of Baruch, okay? Baruch chapter 17. Baruch 17 and verse 8. Because these are civil laws right here that we're reading here. But I want to show you because we were dealing very wrong with one another. We were doing some evil stuff. That's why it says, and, the, and his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verses 8. Mm -hmm. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit. Come on. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. That's how we lost the kingdom. That's how we lost the kingdom. Is it because of unrighteous dealings? Because what we're reading here in Matthew 18, this is an example of an unrighteous dealership. You understand? Unrighteous dealings, injuries, because we're reading injuries now here. You understand? Dealing evil with your neighbor. Okay? It says, and riches God by deceit, we were defrauding one another. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. We lost the kingdom because of that. You understand? Now, go back to Matthew 18, verse 34. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 34. Mm -hmm. And his Lord was drunk and delivered him to the tormentors till Wait. he should pay all that was due unto him. So now he says, the Lord delivered him to the tormentors. The him here is making reference to Israelites. The 12 tribes of Israel. The Lord delivered us to the tormentors. Watch this. Give me the three holy children in the Apocrypha. Okay, verse 9. Three holy children, verse 9. The, Come on. Three holy children, verse 9. And they perverted their own mind. No, no, no. And turned No, no. No, no. What verse you at? No, no. You're not in the same. You're not in the right chapter. The song of the three holy children, verse nine. 
Yes, sir. The song of the three holy children, verse 9. And thou, didst, and thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies. The Lord delivered us. Most hateful. The Hold on. The Lord delivered our, he says, he delivered, he delivered us into the hands of lawless enemies, the tormentors. He delivered us into these tormentors, lawless enemies, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Arabs, the Hamites, you understand, the Europeans, read. Into the lawless, into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God, mm. and to an untest king, and the most wicked in all the world. Let's talk about Esau now, the white man. Come on. And now we cannot open our mouths. We have become a shame and a reproach to thy servants. Read and to them that would you see that thing right there? So that is what that's what the Lord did. He delivered us into the hands of lawless enemies, meaning what the tormentors. The Lord shall deliver you up. You understand? That's what we read in Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. The Lord shall deliver you into the hands of your enemies, and there ye shall what? You shall serve these nations in hunger, in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. I'm paraphrasing it. But that's what this is going into. You understand? Now watch this. Go back to Matthew 18. Read verse 35. Now. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 35. Come on. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. Mm -hmm. If ye from your hearts forgive not everyone, his brother, they are trespassers. That's the whole, that's the conclusion of the whole chapter. Is a so likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you. If ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother, they are trespassers. So we need to forgive one another. Because that's one of the hardest things for black people to do. We don't forgive one another. We must forgive each other. You understand? Because forgiveness does not absolve punishment. You're still going to get punished, but forgiveness, you will, the Lord will forgive you because didn't the Lord put us in slavery? So that's the punishment. Is the Lord not forgi forgiving us now? Yes, because we're repenting. But does it mean we were not punished? No, we don't mean that. We're still getting punished, but the Lord is forgiving us of the evils we've done unto him. That's what you need to understand. Watch this. Give me Sarah 28, verse 2. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 2. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verses 2. Come on. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he hath done unto thee. Mm -hmm. Shall thy sins also be forgiven? When thou prayest. You see what he's saying? He says, forgive thy neighbor the head that he had done unto thee. So shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. Keep going. One man beareth hatred against another. And doth seek the pardon of the Lord. You see, you bear hatred against your brother, but you seek forgiveness from the Lord. That doesn't make sense. Read. He showeth no mercy to a man which is like himself. Come on. And doth he ask forgiveness of his own sins? You see what he's asking? Because remember, we are approaching the day of atonement. You understand? You better make sure that you get your mind right. Okay? So the Lord can forgive you on that day. Imagine you are going through the day of atonement, right? But you hate your brother. But you hate your sister. You cannot stand your sister, but you want the Lord to forgive you on that day. The Lord will not forgive you on that day. You understand? Read that again. Verse 4. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 4. Mm -hmm. He showeth no mercy to a man which is like himself. And doth he ask forgiveness of his own sins? Read. 
if he that is but flesh nourish hatred you see what he's saying in- hold on he says he is he says if he that is but flesh nourish hatred what does it mean to nourish hatred you hold grudges that's what it means to nourish to nourish hatred you are holding a grudge against your neighbor you are nourishing the hatred that hatred is going to destroy you go ahead remember thy end no 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 verse 5 again the book of ecclesiastes chapter 28 verse 5 if he that is but flesh nourish hatred who will entreat for pardon of his sins do you see that thing it says who will entreat for pardon of his sins who's going to fight for your sins to be forgiven you understand that's what he's saying right there jump down to verse 7 The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 28, verse 7. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance. He says, wink at ignorance. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy name, meaning don't hold grudges. Because the grudge is the one that is was explained in verse 5 when it says, if he that is but flesh nourish hatred. So don't bear malice to thy neighbor. Don't nourish hatred against your neighbor. But it says, remember the covenant of the highest. What was the covenant of the highest? What is the covenant? The commandments. You understand? It says, and wink at ignorance. Okay. Give me, watch this. Because something, somebody might think I'm talking crazy. Give me that in Psalm 78. So we understand what is the covenant. It says, remember the covenant. Okay. Mm. The book of Psalm, chapter 78, verses 48. No, 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 no. Verse 10, 48. Where did you get that from? Verse, verse 10, come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 10. Read. They kept not the covenant of God mm-hmm. and refused to walk in his law. You see what the covenant is? The law. The covenant is the law. So it says, go back to Sirach 28 verse 7. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28 verse 7. Remember the commandments and pay no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at in- so it says, don't bear no malice against thy neighbor. To thy neighbor, remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance. The covenant is the law. It says, remember the law. What did the law say regarding bearing malice to your neighbor? Leviticus 19. Let's get that. Leviticus 19. Okay. Verse 17. We're going to read down. The book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. You know what? Let's just get to the point. Reverse 18. Reverse 18. Let's get to the point. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. You see that thing? So when you bear grudge against your neighbor, you are nourishing hatred. Because when somebody is nourishing something, that means you are taking care of it. You are letting, you are, you are, you are watering it, it's growing, you are taking care of it. So that means with, when it comes to hatred also, it says you can do that. People do that, they nourish hatred, meaning what? They plant hatred in their spirit and they take care of that hatred and it grows. You understand that? So you are bearing malice to your neighbor, you're holding a grudge. The Lord says don't do that because guess what? How are you going to stand before the Lord? You have a grudge against your neighbor, your brother. You hate your brother in your heart, but you want the Lord to forgive you of your sins. The Lord is not going to do that. Okay? Go back to Matthew now. Matthew 6. This is how we're going to close it. We're going to close it like this. Watch this. Matthew 6, read verse 12. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 12. Come on. 
and forgive us our debts mm. as we forgive our debtors. As you forgive your brother that do wrong against you. Jump down to verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. You see that thing? If you forgive your brother, yet the trespasses that is done against you, like we read in Sarah 28, verse 2, it says, Your heavenly father will also forgive you. Next verse, watch this. Come on. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. You see what the Lord is saying? It's very clear. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? Now, go back to Baruch 3 verse 8. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, we are yet the stay in our captivity, with our scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payment according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. So Baruch is explaining to us that the payments that we must make is the what? We must pay for our sins. That's the payment. How do we pay for our sins? We went through slavery, colonization, forced migration. And now the Lord is allowing us to return back to him. Now, because now the Lord is rede has redeemed us, you understand, in terms of what? When the Lord, when the Most High God sent his son to die for us. And because of that, now we owe him. So guess what we must do? We must pay all that is owed unto the Lord. That's our reasonable service. Give me that in uh, Romans 12. Okay, Romans 12, verse 2. Start of verse 1. That's our reasonable service, brothers and sisters. We must pay back what, the, what we owe to the Most High. That's our reasonable service. You understand? That's the least we can do. You understand? Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Mm hmm I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, Come on. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see that thing? We must present our bodies a living sacrifice. So you have, you're going to have the lust of your flesh. So guess what? You must sacrifice the lust of your flesh. Why? Because you are presenting your body a living sacrifice that the sacrifice that you present, which is your body, must be holy, must be acceptable unto God. That's your reasonable service. That's now the debt we owe to the Lord. Read again verse 1. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see that thing right there? That's our reasonable service. That's what we must pay to the Lord because that's what we owe him. You understand? We, by presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. How do we do that? Next verse. Come on. And be not conformed to this world. Stop right there. But we must not, hold on, we must not be conformed to this world. Because when you conform to this world, you celebrate their, their customs, you celebrate their, their so-called feast days and so forth, you celebrate Christmas, New Year, you indulge in your sins, in your lusts. You are, you are conforming to this world. The only way that you don't conform to this world, you must, what? You must depart from the evils of this world by keeping the laws of God. You understand? So the world runs on going against the laws of God. So when you keep the laws of God, you are going against the world. Understand that, right? But 
be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh -huh. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Meaning you must repent, get your mind right. That's how you renew your mind. You understand? I'm going to end the class right here. All praises to the most high God. Let's break bread in the, name, in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in the remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This to ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are sick, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.